I'm Paul King. I do most of the vineyard management and um, most of the winemaking and all of the distilling here at Six Mile Creek Vineyard. And I've been here for almost 25 years. I have that tendency as others do that have lived a long time in the same place to say, well, the winters aren't as cold, we're not getting as much snow. And I really believe that to be true. We pay pretty close attention here at Six Mile Creek Winery because in addition to being a winery, we, we do have an active vineyard. We talk about climate change. Longer growing season and a little hotter weather will ripen the fruit more dependably. There are some varieties and I can give you two or three examples. Pinot Noir is a little futzy, Merlot for sure, Cabernet Sauvignon, and to a lesser degree Chardonnay. I think these are varieties that will, will benefit. Maybe pretty soon you'll be seeing uh, Finger Lakes Vineyards attempting to grow things like Zinfandel, a very long, hot season requiring varieties. But even though a globally warming climate in, in a very general sense would help us, it really was part of the problem, not this year, but for us, part of the problem last year. In that really, really warm uh, winter that we had, temperatures barely reached zero degrees. And the spring was fully three weeks earlier and our bud break was three weeks earlier, and then we got a just sort of average cold temperature, but our buds were at their most sensitive point. And we had 80% bud loss last year, not because of minimum cold temperatures, but because the season was so early, and we were thinking we had a, would have had an absolute record year of maybe 28 or 29 tons of grapes out of this five and a half acres. And then we got just a modest excursion down to 29 degrees, and it killed most of the buds. So that's global climate change for you. That's a, that's a part of it that rears its ugly head. Just when you think you could be growing longer season varieties, then you get this kind of warm winter, which is unusual here, an early bud break, and then just sort of average cold, and it takes all your buds. The best management option for any individual vineyard to deal with increasingly varying weather, if we talk about climate change, would be to think carefully about the varieties that they're growing. That's, that's really the biggest management strategy because everything else you're doing is then a little bit of a sort of a stopgap. You know, is there a trellis system that can best help you? Is there a pruning system that can help you in a bad weather? These are all responses, really. Wind turbines help in only very specific weather conditions. They don't help with minimum low temperatures. There's a few times where very calm conditions are set up and there's a steep gradient between the temperatures at the surface and just a few hundred feet in the air. And uh, in these situations, mixing up that layer can help a lot, but they're pretty specific weather conditions and it's a pretty costly investment. So, so this kind of thing, again, is a sort of a management decision and it has a lot to do with how much acreage you have, the co potential cost of your acreage, and how many of these sorts of conditions occur at your site. At our site, they're not quite as common. It's not a flat round. We've got a lot of slope and we get cold air drainage. You have to pay attention to that, but it could, it definitely should be a part of uh, a vineyard's management strategy. You need to grow the varieties that you can grow well, and that's what you need to do. That is especially true at Six Mile Creek, but it's also true for, for any, of the, any of the other vineyards. Last winter was a particularly cold one, and it's really interesting. I think the minimum low temperature in Ithaca is still probably minus 23 degrees Fahrenheit or so. We didn't really approach that, but what we did see here were lots of excursions to minus 14, minus 15, minus 16 degrees, and that is a very, very critical temperature. You're gonna get significant bud loss right around that threshold. What is that gonna have on the quality and quantity of wine grapes that are grown in the region? And certainly at Six Mile Creek Vineyard, we have lost most of the Riesling that, fruit that we had here. Because it was a regional event, not just local to this valley, for example, it's gonna have some pretty serious effects. I anticipate that Riesling's gonna be in high demand, the price is certainly going to go up, and whether or not vineyards like ourselves that don't have an overcapacity and tend to sell extra can get what we need will be a question. It's an agribusiness, you have to pay attention to the weather, it's critical. And here, it means pulling out varieties like Chardonnay. Uh, we're not gonna grow it anymore. As compared with our Save All, a hybrid, where we have virtually a full crop. 
there is a there is a limitation now. There is a, a, a lack of name recognition of some of these hybrids. There are still people that come into the vineyard to this day and they see our Saval Blanc and they say, well, that sounds a lot like Sauvignon Blanc, but, but is that a Sauvignon Blanc? And well, it's, it's not a Sauvignon Blanc. It's a completely different variety. It's my personal favorite. I get six ton per acre even here. It's disease resistant. It's one of the first grape varieties to ripen. It's a beautiful grape variety. It's just relatively unknown. But I think the people that I know that most enjoy wine really like trying new wines. So there's a huge, huge outlet out there for exploring some of the new hybrids. They're great varieties. It's one of the Finger Lakes Fortes in the long run that's gonna serve to help us.